the field has made tremendous mind-boggling progress in finding interventions in mice. Now, mice are far away from humans, but in these models, um, interventions that target metabolism, such as caloric restriction, exercise, various small molecules, removal of cells that age in our tissues, they're called senescent cells, or reprogramming of cells in the body, where you try to make the cells younger again by removing some of the so-called epigenetic marks on the DNA, or treatment with young blood with what we have been working on, and I'll tell you a little bit more about it. Um, all these interventions make mice physically and molecularly younger. They slow down the aging process, and these mice actually often look younger than their siblings that are not treated. So we believe that um, we can, we can uh, intervene directly in the aging process in these organisms. And that has led to a flurry of publications with amazing uh, discoveries, uh, but also to uh, investments. You may have seen Altos Lab with just tremendous uh, amounts of funding, $3 billion in uh, trying to tackle this problem and, uh, and really uh, target aging as almost as if it were a disease to uh, try to slow down and reverse then multiple age-related diseases. And uh, Juan Carlos Espisua, who is one of the leading uh, scientists in this field, uh, has been quoted uh, that uh, within two decades we will be able to prevent aging. Now I know Juan Carlos, I'm sure he did not say that, but that's how he was quoted. Um, <laughs> So, but, but it's real. There is really a, a, a rapid development in applying some of these technologies and, and uh, showing that in complex organisms such as a mouse, you can have um, really uh, uh, impacts that slow down and reverse the aging process. Now, we have been focusing on one of the central tissues in our body, the blood. And there's, of course, the saying, young blood, rejuvenation with blood. Um, and we ask the question, what if we would be able to rejuvenate the blood? So if we look at the blood, at the composition of blood in a young versus an old organism, we can actually show that there are dramatic changes. And here's just an illustration of that. So what we look at here are 3,000 different proteins in the blood of healthy individuals, age 20 to almost 100. And in the colors, we show in blue the, a low level of a protein, and in yellow, high levels of a protein. So you have 4,300 people that we line up here from left to right, and for each person we measure these 3,000 proteins. And you can see the dramatic changes that occur with aging. So young people have a completely different composition of the blood than old people. And that makes you wonder, and maybe understand, that if we change now the blood of an old person to a young one, maybe this will have an effect. And indeed, that's what we were able to find. Multiple other labs that if we use sort of a surgical paradigm where we connect two mice at their flanks such that they're able to exchange blood from young to old, or we actually give old mice repeated infusions of young blood, we can rejuvenate multiple organs such as the heart, muscle, liver, kidney, bone, pancreas, and aorta. And multiple labs have been able to reproduce these findings now. My lab has focused on the brain specifically, and here we were able to show that there are more stem cells in the brain that can make new nerve cells, new neurons. There is more chatter, there's more communication between the cells in the brain. There is less inflammation, and most importantly, these mice become smarter. So the old mice, they have the same problem that humans have. As we get older, we start to forget things. And we have behavior tests for mice where we can measure that. But if we give them young blood, they do better again in these tests. And they function better. And we were able, uh, indeed able to translate this into humans. So in a number of clinical research studies that are still ongoing, first at the Alzheimer's Research Center here at Stanford, um, and then at a startup that I founded, and later by a, a large company that makes uh, blood products that collects plasma donations from many donors and then fractionates that. 
What these studies show that in, in early studies, multiple infusions of plasma from mostly young donors, on average 35 years of age, show sort of promising signs in small proof of concept and dosing studies. And excitingly, a large study that has actually f more than 500 uh, patients, the company Griffos removed first their old blood and then gave infusions of young plasma or a fraction of plasma that is rich in albumin. And what they can show is significant benefits um, in disease progression, improving the memory in these individuals, and also improving their daily functioning. Suggesting that what we discover in the mice and what works in the mice might actually work in people as well. Of course, we want to understand how exactly does that work. What are the components in this blood that are able to do this and move this forward, hopefully, into the clinic so that we can help people?